Longhorn Band or academic course conflicts. So uh, tonight is the third time that it's been kicked down and the camera is broken, um, the battery's broken, and we're gonna see if it can work. Um, but please be careful when you're walking in because we always set up the camera right there. And please be mindful that it's, you know, a piece of vital equipment that we need for other students who can't attend so they can see the lectures and do the makeup assignment. Um, I think that's about it. So since we've already passed our time, I want to go ahead and hand it off to our guest speaker this evening. Um, she has come out in the last couple of years. She has spoke to the other cohorts as well uh, because we heard from you from prior ULN classes, this is something that you need, that this is vital. Uh, you saw me ask about um, your employment situation. Uh, if you do need to work, uh, I'd like to try and understand uh, your financial situations. You know I used to work in the financial aid office as well. Uh, so I urge you and I challenge you, take ownership of your money matters, your finances. Uh, you need to start doing that. So in that regard, I'm going to go ahead and kick Square Cap off. Oh, sorry, Lauren. Oh, you're fine. Okay, the question is, how do you manage your finances? A, my parents do it for me. B, I check my balance, and if I have money, I'll use it. C, I try to save a little each month, but I don't track my spending. D, I have a budget, and I stick with it. Or E, I just wait for the late payment notices to arrive. Uh, so I'm going to leave that running. I'm very interested in the, uh, in the answers, and we'll check those maybe uh, during the lecture, too, as well. Okay, so tonight I present to you um, Lauren Hernandez from the University Federal Credit Union. Uh, yes. She worked right across the street uh, on the drag at the branch uh, that's right there, but she has recently, since last year, received a promotion into the mortgage area, so let's give her a hand. <laughs> And I know Ron last night said, don't worry about taking notes or put your laptops away and stuff. You may want to take notes for this one because this is really good stuff, practical stuff. I learned some things last year when she talked about it. So uh, without further delay, Lauren Hernandez. I might have to quit just because last time I was breathing in it you like Darth Vader. Clip it on, just kind of test to see if people in the back. Is it on? And you may have to project, yes. And you may have to project just a little bit. Okay. Just Can you guys hear me in the back? Maybe not, maybe so. Test, test. Can so, you guys hear me in the back? A so. little bit? So-so, yes. So-so? I guess I'll talk loud. Last time I held this and I was breathing like Darth Vader, so yeah, I don't want to do that to you guys. I get really excited about general money management, so. <laughs> so my name is Lauren Hernandez. I work with University Federal Credit Union. I was on the drag, now I'm a mortgage. Um, I've been in banking since 2008, and I'm 30 years old, and you guys are what, 18, 19-ish? I literally didn't know most of this until I was probably 28, 27 when I started working for UFCU. And most of what you hear throughout your life in regards to credit and money management, especially credit, it could be a lot of hearsay. So you really want to find a trusted resource that, you know, like me, you guys can feel free to email me, call me, ask me your questions. but. Don't believe everything that you see or hear maybe on social media or websites, credit repair websites, sometimes they don't have, it can be very opinion based. Um, so I found my passion just through, I, was, I came into banking in 2008, but I worked for a bigger bank. And I had listened to the advice of my upper management and my peers, and it really screwed me. <laughs> when I moved to Texas four years ago, I had probably a D, D minus credit score because of what other people had told me and just late payments and whatnot. And it took me a couple of years, but last year I was able to get up to an 802 credit score by my first house. So just, no, thank you. Just knowing, thank you. Just knowing um, what you should and shouldn't do with credit is very, very helpful. So hopefully you guys learned some new things. So. Mo money, no problems. <laughs> it's not what BIG said. Um, so cash is king, but you also need credit. They go kind of hand in hand. So now that I'm in mortgage, I see people all the time, um, physicians especially, that are like, I have millions of dollars, but 
if the credit aspect isn't there and you're trying to qualify for a home loan, which is a lot more regulated now after the 2008 downfall, um, you're gonna need both. So it's crucial to have both. These are just some of your daily needs. Um, you're gonna, this is just the bare necessities, but you also wanna have money for your wants. You wanna have money to travel. You wanna have money to study abroad. You wanna have money for massages when you're stressed out, pedicures, um, Starbucks, Netflix. Those things are luxuries in life and you need them to de-stress or you want them, shall I say. So credit is very, very important because it is truly your lifelong financial GPA. It stays with you forever and ever. Good news is if you end up in a situation where, oh man, I had a late payment and my credit score went down 100 points, you can get past that and we'll go over that, but just know that it is truly very, very important. Um, as you can see here, lenders check your credit, employers, landlords when you wanna rent, insurance companies, utilities. If you have good credit, you truly have an advantage. You can sometimes negotiate fees, deposit fees, um, you get better interest and it saves you a ton of money. Can you guys still hear me in the back? Hopefully. Let me know if you can't hear me, just wave to me. <laughs> um, but it'll truly save you a lot of money. If you don't know how to check your credit or even what that entails, we'll also go over that. And don't feel bad because um, a, a survey from the National Foundation for Credit Counseling stated that one in three Americans didn't know how to check their credit score. Now, thankfully, there's companies that are coming out offering that with you know, your credit card service or whatever it may be. Um, but again, just know how to check your credit and what is available to you. <clears throat> again, these are just some things that you wanna have good credit for. Better interest rates, easier to qualify for loans, you're gonna save money so you'll have more cash in your bank account, more financial freedom. And again, it's your lifelong GPA. So, in general, in the finance world or in the lending world, Shay, say retail banking, when you're applying for loans, you need three things, and we call them CIA. It's pretty easy to remember, or it's a three-legged stool. If you don't have all three, one of the legs comes off and it's a lot easier, it's a lot harder to sit on that stool. <laughs> um, again, they do go hand in hand. Um, I was raised on a military mentality of debt is bad, credit is bad, just if you don't have the cash for it, don't buy it. So I went the first five years after I turned 18 with basically no credit. And there is a false kind of myth that, oh my gosh, having no credit is just as bad as having bad credit. Don't let anyone tell you that. It's a clean slate, there's ways to get started, and I'll help you with that as well. So these are just, I just wanted to let you guys know these are common credit myths. Um, checking your own credit report. So on things like Credit Karma, you guys may have seen commercials for them, annualcreditreport.com, that doesn't affect your credit score. What does are inquiries when you're applying for loans, credit cards. You don't wanna just go out right away and say, I need credit and start applying everywhere. Um, this is a big one. So this is one thing that was told to me. So it's better to carry a balance on your credit card. Let's say you need the new MacBook that's coming out you charge 1200 bucks on your credit card and you're paying $100 a month. It's gonna take you a year to pay off and you're gonna pay interest on top of it. That has been a huge credit myth. The truth is there's a different type of credit, which I'll go over. Car loans, personal loans, student loans, those are called installment loans. They have a fixed payment and a fixed term. Those, of course, when you buy a car, let's say it's $10,000, of course, you can't just pay that off right away. You need a car. Um, so you will make the minimum payments on that. But on credit cards, lines of credit, things like that, always try to pay off the balance in full every single month. Or at least the minimum payment. Financial times can get tough, so just don't miss your payment. That's the most crucial thing. Debt is debt, so credit card debt, mortgage debt, two different things. Obviously, you wanna have good mortgage debt. You, want, you don't wanna miss your payments. You don't wanna go into default. You don't wanna just say, I'm, not just, I'm just not gonna pay my mortgage. But that debt is considered way better than credit card debt. Credit card debt is riskier to lenders because let's say you stop paying on your credit card and you owe $10,000, they're gonna have no way to collect that money. Your credit will be kinda of screwed for a while, but on a house, 
they can take your house. They can foreclose on you. Same thing with a car loan. It's less risk because they can take your car away from you. So you pay less interest with those. Um, debit cards, paying rent, and utilities are not credit. They do show up on your credit for when those companies pull it. So they have their own kind of credit system to where they can see, oh, you know, she signed up for City of Austin Utilities and she owes $300, she never paid. So when I sign up again for electric service and water, I might pay a $1,000 fee just to initiate service. That's a lot. But the sad thing is, is even though you may have these things right now, your bank account, your paying rent, you have utilities in your name, it's not actual retail banking credit. So just keep that in mind. It can hurt you, but it doesn't help you, unfortunately. Um, closing credit cards. So let's say you're 26 years old and you have a ton of credit cards and you're like, oh man, and this happened to me. When I was 24, 25, I started getting credit cards and I had maybe five to 6,000 and I was just in a medical situation where I was out of work for a while. And so one of my managers said, just close them out and just pay them off. Just Instead of saying, cut the card up and don't use it and pay it off, he told me to close my credit cards. Once you close a credit card, you can't reopen it. So let's say you start a credit card when you're 18 and you're 30 years old. You have 12 years on that credit line. If you close that, it's just gone. It's deleted. So it doesn't benefit you to close it. Pay it off, cut it up, don't use it. Um, another one, I only have one credit score, that's also a myth. Um, you have your FICO score, Vantage, there's three credit bureaus, you have multiple ones, so don't think that I just have one score and that's it, unlike a GPA. Um, again, once my credit is ruined, it's ruined forever, that's false, and I can help you with reestablishing credit. Hit me up. Okay. These are just general banking terms. I'm not gonna focus on these too much because I do have a lot to go over and I'm gonna try to make it very fun for you guys. Refinance, so it's basically taking one loan. If you qualify to refinance that at a lower rate or um, lower payment, you'll take that debt from one bank and move it to another. Collection or charge off, this is when you just stop paying. They send you the collection agencies and they will call you 100 times a day until they get their money. If you're ever sent to collections, don't negotiate with them unless it's a dire emergency. I would say really just with medical, um, medical things, sometimes people will get into hundreds of thousands of dollars of medical debt. If you're trying to just say, hey, I need to go from 100,000 to 50,000, sometimes they'll offer you that, but that's just last resort. If you owe money to somebody, just try to pay it in full. Um, fixed rate. This is an interest rate on a loan or a credit card. It means once you sign up for the rate and it's 15%, it's 15%, it doesn't change, unless you refinance. Variable rate means it can change, it can go up and down. So those are very risky. You definitely wanna read the fine print when you're getting into something like that. Interest is how much money you pay on top of the money you're borrowing. Cosigner. So when you're starting off um, establishing credit, you may need this because most Banks and credit unions require you to have some type of income to prove that you can pay it back. Or they might say, hey, can you get a parent or a sister or somebody that could co-sign for you that maybe has credit? And then it's easier to qualify. Inquiry. Again, every time you apply for a credit card, a loan, it's an inquiry. You really want to try to keep those about two to three a year. And those go away after two years. Overdraft fee. These are not fun. These can be anywhere from $30 to $60. It's basically when you use your debit card and you don't have enough money and you're just not checking your bank accounts, they're gonna hit you with a fee and say, oh, sorry, we gave you the money for Netflix and here's a $40 fee on top of it. It's crucial to check your bank accounts every day. So you guys are, um, I don't know what the analogy I wanna use here. I don't wanna say you guys have it made, but back in my day, <laughs> We didn't have the convenience of mobile apps, online banking. We literally had to wait for a printed bank statement to come once a month, and you had to check on their Netflix. It took forever. So now you have the convenience of you just log on your mobile app, check it every day. It's just a good habit to get into. So this is a true story. When I was working at the branch on the drag, a UT faculty member came in and said, hey, I don't bank here, but my coworker said to come in here and you guys would help me with my car payment. 
What had happened was back in, I think she bought a car right around Christmas time. She went to a dealership, she found this new car, loved it, and they said, oh, you have no credit. Unfortunately, that's just as bad as having bad credit, so we're gonna give you 18%, but you can get into a brand new car. If you go to a dealership to buy a car, don't let them tell you that. They'll not only tell you no credit is just the same as bad credit, but they'll tell you it's gonna be much easier to qualify you for an $20,000 brand new car instead of the car you came to buy that fits into your budget. They're gonna tell you, we're gonna put you something in brand, put you something in brand new and you're gonna get excited, the new car smell hits you, you get a little, little crazy, you're like, yeah, let's do it. So she had a five year term, which is standard. She walked out with a $514 car payment. If she would have just kept that car for the five years and been making payments, she would have paid an additional $10,000 or almost $11,000 in interest on top of a car that's depreciating in value. Six months later, because she had established credit and she was making her payments on time, we refinanced it to 2.15, cut her payment down by 200 bucks and saved her like nine grand. And she was just amazed. And it really, just that alone, you have to sit and think, oh my God, what could I do with all that money? Put it towards a student loan, that's how many classes, that's a vacation somewhere, but it's a lot of money. This is by far the most important thing I'm gonna to talk to you guys about tonight. We call these the big five. These are the five factors that go into your credit score. The most important being on-time payments. Always, always, always pay your bill on time. Even if you're in a dire situation where your minimum payment on your credit card is $50, try to find that $50 somewhere. Ask a friend, look on their couch, whatever it takes, don't just say, I can't pay it, so I'm not gonna pay it. <sighs> Sucks. One payment is gonna affect you for seven years. And it's, it's detrimental, it really hurts your credit. So pay on time. Again, do you pay the minimum or the full balance? Always with a credit card, try to pay it off. If you spend $100, pay $100. You have a month to pay it, so just, again, be prepared for the expenses you're making. Capacity, so on a credit card, this is your second most important thing. You can see here we're already at 65%. Capacity, let's say you get your first credit card and they say you're approved for $1,000. You really wanna try to keep your capacity under 20%. So basically, and let's say you have to buy something for $800, pay it off right away. But you don't wanna carry that balance and just make the minimum payments because what it looks like to lenders is that you're high risk. You're just gonna go out and get another credit card, max it out. Get another credit card, max it out. Credit card average, ba or average interest is about 18 to 19%. So tack that on top of $1,000, that's a lot, can add up. And it's a revolving balance. So they're gonna charge you interest every single month until you pay it off. Length of credit history. So it's important to start now. And again, if you open a credit card, don't close it out. Um, how long have you had credit? And you can see it's only 15%, but it still is detrimental, especially once you're my age and you're 30 and you've had a credit card since you were 18, don't close it out. New credit, so are you applying for credit everywhere? What's going on? Do you have new credit going on? When I bought my house, I think it had been two years prior to that since I pulled my credit. Even though mortgage debt is good debt, it's still a brand new credit line and the credit bureaus don't know if I'm gonna pay that or not. So it's risky, it's a new credit line, they don't know what's gonna happen there. Types of credit used. There's two types, revolving and installment. Do you guys need me to stay on this or are you guys still taking notes? Okay, cool. Um, so installment is like a car loan, student loan, mortgage, it just means, hey, we're signing you up for a, car, a five year car note, payment is 300 bucks, um, once it's done, it's done. Paid off, awesome. A credit card is revolving. It's just like a revolving door. Once you pay it off, you can use the money again. It's just never ending. The most important thing with this is that you do wanna have both. You don't need it right away. I didn't have a car loan until I was 27. So it's, you don't have to go out and go buy a car right now or have both. 
But eventually, over your lifetime, you want to have a mix of both. Again, just going over the payment history factor is it's huge. Um, as you can see here, lenders really look at the first, it, the payment history affects you for the most two years is what they look at, the most recent two year history. So if you did have a late payment five years ago, it's not gonna affect you as much as it would have six months ago, but it still will affect you because it does stay on there for seven years. Capacity, so again, just Keep your credit limits below 20%. 10% if possible will keep you in the A plus tier versus the A. And when you're applying for things like car loans, mortgages, going from the A to A plus tier can really make a huge difference in interest. A plus is where you see, <coughs> you see car commercials and they say 0% for qualified buyers. A plus credit is what you want. You can get into 0% for auto loans, you just need to have A plus credit. Um, add on capacity over time. So when you first start out, your credit limit's probably gonna be $500, $1,000, it's gonna be really small. It took me until I'm 30 now, I have five or six credit cards now and the combined available credit limits are like 40,000. Don't just go out and get credit cards to say, oh, I need, you know, I want a $10,000 credit limit. Yes, the more available credit you have that you're not using is good, but do it over time. It took me 12 years. This is just a general FAQ for you guys. Personal characteristics, how much money you make, how long you've lived somewhere, things like that, do not affect your credit score. A lot of people think especially income does, doesn't. So how do you establish credit? There's multiple ways. Again, don't go out and start applying for credit cards everywhere, especially department store credit cards. Department store credit cards, honestly, are the most useless credit cards you can get. <laughs> All you get, let's say you go into Target. With the Target credit card, you can just only use it at that store. All it does is, oh, we'll save you 20% on this purchase. Yay. Again, with the credit cards, once you open it, you don't want to close it. So what benefit do you have in opening a department store card? Because you get 20% off on your purchase? Doesn't make sense. Department store cards, just try to avoid them apply for a low interest card. There are a lot of options out there. You can go to creditcards.com and you can compare. For your first card, you really wanna to try to stick to something that's just low interest, no annual fee. Don't go out and try to get the Southwest Airlines card, the Chase Sapphire, American Airlines. They're very hard to qualify for and you need typically A to A plus credit for that. You always wanna have low interest cards for emergencies. I think I have three out of my five just in case, God forbid, I lose my job, I'm in depleted my savings and I have no money to live on. I have a low interest card instead of putting it on my, cha or my Capital One Venture card that gives me a miles. And again, pay on time. You can also open what's called a cash secured credit card or loan. Let's say you have money in the bank from when you graduated high school. You can go to a credit union or bank and say, here's $500, I wanna borrow money against myself. Sounds kind of weird, but you can do it. So you just, they hold the $500 and you make minimum payments or let's say it's $100 a month. Yay, you'll have it paid off in five months, but there's some credit. Keep your credit line capacity under 20%. Again, on your credit card, just pay it off, pay it in full every month. Use a cosigner if needed. Don't close your credit cards. Pay your bill on time. Again, this is a theme here. Don't miss payments. If whatever you have to do to remind yourself, don't miss your due dates on your bills. Another crucial piece is don't skip your student loans when you graduate. You follow up with them. Don't expect them to call you when you graduate. Some do, some, the day you graduate, they'll be calling you, but <laughs> the most important thing is you wanna follow up with them and say, hey, I'm graduating, when is my first payment due? There's also different options where you can consolidate them. You can ask them for um, payment help and we'll kind of go over that in a minute too. But the biggest thing is don't skip out on the payments. Choosing a credit card. The three things that you wanna look at when you're looking at a credit card, because again, it's your forever card, is one, the annual fee. Just to have that piece of plastic, it's gonna cost me X amount of dollars. There are cards available without an annual fee. Try to shoot for those. 
I have one card that has an annual fee of $59. It's the Capital One Venture, but I just got it like two years ago and I travel a lot. So every year, because I don't use my debit card anymore and I just use my credit card and I pay it off, I get a ton of miles. Miles cards, again, and cashback cards are only beneficial to you if you pay it off every month. You have to really have the discipline to pay it off. Interest rate. Read the fine print, because they could say, hey, 0% intro, but after that it's 30%. So you want to check when that happens. Um, just know what you're getting into. Reading that fine print, maybe doing some research, consumer reviews, things like that. And again, the general features. What's in it for me? What do I get out of it? Low interest, awesome. Miles, awesome. Cash back, great. This is one of the only legitimate websites where you can get a free credit report every year. There are a ton of websites that offer you a free credit report, but they are not free. They'll ask you for a debit card, credit card. If somebody's saying, hey, I'll hook you up, it's free, give me your debit card. Why? It's not free if you're asking me for my card. Oh, don't worry, we won't charge you. Just make sure you cancel. Nah, I don't wanna do that. So with annual credit report, you're entitled to one free credit report from all three bureaus for free every year. Credit Karma is awesome and amazing. It's, a, it's been around for a couple of years now, but they have a great app. It'll tell you your credit score for free. Keep in mind they use a Vantage score because it is free. They're not gonna offer you your most accurate score. I think when I did my mortgage last year, it varied by like 30, 40 points. But just, it tells you an idea of where your credit score is at. And most importantly, what's on your credit report. So numbers and scores may vary, but the story should be the same. What's on your report should not change. If you go to www.ufcu.org, on the top little search bar, if you type credit score, there's also some helpful articles and links. I'll let you guys read that for a moment. <clears throat> So I just wanted to throw this out there. This is just average. I've seen some people apply for mortgages when they graduate and they have 60,000, 80,000. Student loans can really be a, a great thing because you need higher education, it's very important, but they can also be a bad thing. And I'll go over that. Another little fun fact. So I am not fully licensed to go into specifics with student loans and student loan debt and whatnot, but whoop, skipped ahead. There's a few things that you can do um, once you graduate to pay off your student loans. Um, prioritize your loan payments, um, build it into your budget. So there are programs like the PAYE, pay as you earn, and they basically can't charge you or can't make you pay more than 1% of your full balance. So in this case, it would have been $371. If you had that total amount and they're saying, oh, you're gonna pay $800. It can happen, but you can look into options where you can say, you know what? I'm only making 37,000 a year starting out, so I can't afford more than $371 a month. Great, it's 1%. Um, don't be afraid to seek help. Ask your peers, ask your advisors, look online, do your research. Go to the financial aid office. I'm sure they have just ask questions. It never hurts to ask. Student loan, again, is a necessary evil. You need it for your tuition, for your books, for your living expenses, but don't use it for your Chick-fil-A and your Starbucks every day. Really, really, really try to budget because even Starbucks adds up five, six dollars a day, adds up to be a lot of money. Um, Especially when you think of, man, I could have started paying all my student loans, even 10 bucks a month, getting ahead. Four years from now will make a huge difference. On studentloanhero.com, I just wanted to give you guys a little example. So this 6.8% is pretty common. So 10 years, which is pretty average, it takes you about 10 years to pay 37 grand off because you're gonna have other expenses when you graduate, you're gonna have rent. You're gonna have a car payment. You're gonna have all these other necessities. So if you're paying that, 
you can see over 10 years, you're gonna end up paying an additional 14 grand in interest. So it's crucial to even just, if you can, start paying on them now. 40 bucks a month, take that Starbucks money, put it towards your loans now, because when you graduate, it will really sneak up on you. This is just one example of um, how expensive credit card debt can get, 2,800 bucks, it's nothing. People come in all the time and they're like, oh, I have so much credit card debt, I'm so embarrassed. They have five, six grand. Honestly, that's nothing. I see $60,000, $100,000. At 18 to 20% interest, that takes 30 plus years to pay off. It's really, really hard once you get into that cycle to get out of it. You can see here, if you're paying $100 a month on 2,800, it's gonna take you three years to pay it off and you'll pay an additional 900 bucks in interest. So the interest will really, really get you. These are just some small things that people throw their money away on, especially around campus. Parking fees, overdraft fees, ATM fees, 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 fees. The biggest one of all, which one do you think is the biggest one that people throw their money away on? Which one? Yep. <laughs> now I know you guys can't read this, but my favorite little fact on there is that 88% of impulse purchases are made because an item is on sale. I swear, when I, when I saw this a few years ago, I was like, oh my God, everywhere you go, there's a sale. And you think you're getting the hookup because there's a sale. They're like, buy one, get one free. Why do I need buy one, get one free mittens? I just eat one pair of mittens a year. Just everywhere you go. And I was like, man, I'm a sucker. I get suckered into all these. So just try to get into the habit of thinking before you swipe that card. <laughs> These are just common impulse purchases. I am addicted to sushi, I love sushi. <laughs> Food, makeup, shoes, iTunes, clothes, breakfast tacos, Starbucks. Starbucks is probably my biggest weakness, not gonna lie. If you saved $50 a week, you can save $2,600 a year. $50 a week kind of sounds a little tight, but it's doable. If you save that weekly, by the time you graduate, you would have about $11,000. That's not including the interest that the bank pays you to just keep it in an account. It's a nice little vacation when you graduate. If you were to spend $20 a day eating out, which is pretty average, it's $140 a week times four, that's about five, six hundred bucks a month times 12, that's almost seven grand a year. If you're making 40 to 50,000 a year and you still have rent, all kinds of expenses, seven grand out of that is a huge chunk. So here's some budgeting tips. This I would say is the most crucial is distinguishing between a want and a need. Just stopping and thinking, do I need this breakfast taco or do I want it? Any little thing where you're gonna swipe your card, stop and think, do I want it or do I need it? I actually have, I don't know how many of you guys have iPhones, but on the Notepad app, I have a wants and I have a needs list. My wants is always growing. <laughs> I want this, I want that, I wanna go to Costa Rica, all these things, but knowing is this an immediate need or is just a luxury, is this just something I want? Can I save for it? The feeling of saving money to buy something, it's just, it's 